Okay. I, I think it's working. <laughs> it looks like it's working finally. Oh my gosh. Miracle of miracles. We've been working on it for 25 minutes and I think we're live. So if you're here and watching, please leave me comment on the live. I don't know if this is even in the right place. Um, I, I even tried to do everything, you know, proactively and I got a, um, I got a live, oh, sorry, hi Kira. <laughs> I got, um, like I, I pre-scheduled it, but then I couldn't get back into that post. And anyway, so I think that, I think that we're live now. And I hope that if you were looking for it, you were able to find it and that um, you uh, maybe didn't give up on us. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm, I'm just so relieved. I was like in a panic. Um, so I'm Angie Lucas and I write picture books. This is my daughter, Kira. Hi. And she is in third grade. And like a lot of you, she just started homeschooling for a while. Didn't you? Mm -hmm. How's that been going? Well, I like it a lot better than actually going to school because I get to spend more time with my family and I still get to learn. That's great. I've, I've been loving it too. It's been a little, you know, it's been a bumpy start, but I think we're starting to get the hang of it. So, um, okay. So if we have any kids right now, um, I'm not sure how all this works. <laughs> if we're even working, it looks like it's live and working. Um, but if, um, and I don't dare touch anything. So if you're here and watching, I would love to hear, um, if you're a child, um, what name, your name and what, and what grade you're in. Um, but if you're here, if anybody managed to stay with us through all of that, um, we're just thrilled to have you here. Um, so I wanted to, sh I want to show you my very first picture book. And um, this is my very first picture book. I wanted to be an author my whole life. And so this last summer, my dream came true with this book, which was published by Sounds True as the publisher. And I wrote the words, but and then a wonderful illustrator named Brigitte Sif did all of the pictures. So I wish I was an artist too, but I, I, don't, I don't draw as well as I write. So um, I wanted to show you just how fun um, and globally connected we all are with things like publishing a book. So Kira, will you hand me the um, globe? All right. Okay, so, um, and actually, for people who are, I'm going to quickly get on Facebook and comment, because I think some people might be looking for me in a different spot. So please forgive this slight, in, you know, hiccups we've been having this morning. But I'm just going to comment and say, um, I know there's a few of you joining in, but comment on my post and say, oh, looks like we are live. Oh, and I'm watching myself. So um, refresh and you'll find me. I'm just making that comment and then okay, and I'll comment on this too. I'm live now. If you can't see us, try again. Maybe refresh. Okay, there we go. Because I had a few people looking for us. I'm live. Refresh. <laughs> if you can't see us. You know, this is just you know, life lately. It's kind of crazy. Um, okay. Done texting. Hopefully people found us. All right. So I wanted to show you where I live on the globe, well, where Kira and I live with our family. Okay. So this is Utah right here in the United States. Oh, it's kind of shiny right, right, right there. So um, this is Utah in the United States. And my publisher is in Colorado, which is right there next to Utah. And then my illustrator is from clear up here in Iceland. This is where she's from, but she currently lives in Sweden. And our book was published in South Korea, which is right over here. 
between Japan and China. So um, we truly are super connected in this world. I think we're all finding that out so um, clearly with the global events that have been happening, but when it comes to publishing a book, it takes a village, it takes a lot of people, and it's really fun to see how this little book has traveled the whole globe, the story and the pictures, and to get it all printed. Okay, so um, before I tell you too much about the book, I'd like to read it to you, and then we have a special guest we'd like to introduce you to, right, Kara? Yeah. And, well, after Henny, after Henny. <laughs> Sorry, Kira is going to is working on her dragon drawing right now. We'll be drawing a dragon at the end of the activity as well. So, this is the book. Oh, you want to show right now? Here's a peek. <laughs> Here's a peek. So, this is the book, My Big Dumb Invisible Dragon, and written by me, illustrated by Brigitte Sif. So, I'll read it now. Um, hopefully, that delay gave a few people more time to join. Okay. Have you ever seen an invisible dragon? Neither had I. But one day last May, a giant one swooped in and landed on my head, right on top of my head. It was the day Ollie's mom came to get us from Turtle Hill, Hill Park. Instead of my mom, she had a funny look on her face and she opened her mouth three times before any words came out. I don't know if the dragon rode to the park with Ollie's mom or if he was already there hiding in the trees. All I know is I didn't see him coming and once he was there, he would not go away. Dad and I had to get used to making dinner without mom there. We had to get used to how quiet it was in the car without her singing along to the radio. We had to get used to movie night without her famous peanut brittle popcorn. But that big dumb dragon didn't even notice. He moved right in and made himself at home. He curled up on my chest every night when I was going to sleep. I swear he must have weighed a ton. He made it super hard to get out of bed in the morning. At school, he cast a ginormous shadow that followed me everywhere. And if you think it was easy to stand up straight with a dragon on my head, let me tell you, it wasn't. I think he's the reason some kids didn't talk to me as much anymore. Some days I ignored him. I, pretend he was, I pretended he wasn't there at all. I played hard and laughed like crazy, even louder and crazier than before. But that didn't make him leave. Other days I got angry. You can't believe how mad I got. I yelled and shouted at him, at everyone. What did that dragon do? He put on his headphones and tuned me out. There were also days when I'd reach up and pull his big heavy wings around me. I would curl up and like a caterpillar and hide away for hours. It wasn't always so bad to have him around. Still, almost every day, I tried to make a deal with him. If you'll just get lost, I'll never say a bad word ever again, I told him. I thought maybe if he left, things could go back to the way they were, but he didn't seem to care what I wanted. Not one bit. Then one day, when the sky was filled with cotton candy clouds, Ollie invited me back to the park. I made myself roll and cartwheel and race down Turtle Hill just like before. I ran so blazing fast that my hair stood straight up like uncooked spaghetti, which made Ollie giggle. Then something happened that I wasn't expecting at all. For the first time in months, I forgot all about my dragon. When we ran out of breath, we, we flopped down on the grass and took turns spotting shapes in the clouds. I see a giant octopus, I said. Does that look like a chicken to you, Ollie asked. There's a pig, or is that a bear, I asked. That one kind of looks like a dinosaur, Ollie said. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's a dragon. I don't know what that dragon, dragon saw up there in the clouds, but after that day, he started soaring even higher and staying away longer. He often disappeared during gym and recess. Sometimes he'd miss a whole soccer game. Once he was gone for an entire weekend. Can you see him though? Out the window? Look closely, you'll be able to see the dragon out the window. 
But he came back just in time for my birthday party. I tried all of my tricks to make him go away. Skedaddle, vamoose. What do you think he did? He put on a rainbow striped cone hat and stayed for the party. I finally just gave him a piece of my birthday cake. That night as I waited for sleep, I realized something. Oh, that night as I waited for sleep, which can take a while when there's a big dumb dragon in your bed, I realized something. My dragon didn't feel as heavy as he did back when I was six. I guess my birthday wish came a little bit true. Can you see the dragon? He's still there, but just a little smaller, or a lot smaller. <laughs> hey, remember if, when I asked if you've ever seen an invisible dragon? That was a silly question. You can never see one by looking straight at it. You have to look at the person underneath. Sorry about that. The um, camera is backwards, so it's hard to hold it on the screen. But anyway, that's my book. And I'm so glad that this book is out in the world right now because I think a lot of us right now are feeling the weight of some heavy invisible dragons sitting on our shoulders. Um, we might be feeling grief. We might be feeling fear. We might be feeling stress or anxiety. Um, I think those feelings are very real right now, and a lot of people are experiencing those. Um, <clears throat> and it's going to look very different for each one of us, um, how those feelings feel and how they manifest in our bodies. But I want you to notice something about the book, and that's that while this little boy, you know, his invisible dragon looks a certain way, kind of blue with purple, a little bit of purple on him, um, there's a little girl and her dragon looks quite different. Hers is pink and a little rounder and softer, just a little bit different. So um, every experience of grief or fear or anxiety is going to be unique to us. It's going to be um, different for every one of us. Um, so I think this is a great time to introduce our special guest. What do you think, Kira? Yeah. Okay. So Kira has a special guest she'd like to bring up. I'll scoot your chair back a little bit here. Okay, this is my big dumb invisible dragon made into a plush, huggable dragon. Do you want to give him a hug for everybody so they can see? I'm going to lean in. Lean in. Oh, there you go. So this, he actually has a special name, and his name is, say it, Kira. Sorg. Sorg. And um, apologies to Birgitta and everyone who speaks Icelandic or Swedish for for that pronunciation, but um, this dragon, we named him for the Swedish Icelandic word for sorrow, and that is sarg, and I'm saying it terrible, but um, we thought it, Birgitta and I both felt like that had a very good dragony sounding name, so that is his name, and I bring him with me to book signings and events so that we can um, have someone to give kids a hug, and um, he's got his silver wings and his nice long tail, and his floppy little arms. And Kira noticed first thing that he's not actually wearing boots like he is in the book. I love his boots. But um, I also love his bare feet too. So this is our giant dragon friend that we brought with, with us, Sork. I'm gonna hug him. <laughs> so um, I want you to think about, for those children who are watching and participating, I want you to think about what your dragon might look like. Um, so we're going to be doing an activity together, and this activity comes from my Storytime kit. And this kit is available on my website, which is angielucas.com, and it's free. You just scroll down to the bottom of the page and sign up for my email list, and you'll be able to download it. And my email list um, is not some, I don't email super often, so no worries about getting spammed. I mean, it might be so far once a year. I'd love to improve that, but you won't be getting a ton of emails, so it's totally safe to sign up, and you'll get this whole 16-page um, Storytime kit, which will help you know you engage with the themes of the book, and there's just activities to do with children, and there's a lot of activities that could be useful right now. So um, 
I'll kind of walk you through some of the things you can do. There's some story time tips if you're hosting a story, a story time around the book at a library or, or somewhere like that, or at a grief center. We talk about the names of the book, of the characters in the book. So we have Sorg. And you notice that the, the main little boy isn't named in the book. The only person with the name is the friend Ollie. Um, and he's important because he really demonstrates how to be a good friend um, when someone is in grief or fear. Like Ollie just acts like nothing's wrong. I mean, he shows up, I guess. He just, he doesn't let, he didn't let the experiences that happened to our main character change his friendship with him. He still showed up and was still there and invited him to the park and did all those things that are so important so that people don't feel abandoned at the time when they're also having a hard time. So um, then we have a little activity where we can discuss what sorrow feels like, which could help children um, identify and maybe draw how that feels for them in their bodies. There is also a draw your own dragon activity on page seven, which is what we're going to be doing here in a minute. Um, there's some tips for how to be a good friend, um, things to say, things not to say. We also have a card that you can make to send to a friend with little sentiments you can cut out on this page and then a card to print and fold. And there's some coloring pages from Brigitte Sif. I love this page. This is one of my favorites. When, when our main character is trying to get rid of the dragon, one of the things he does is try to shove him in the refrigerator. I love that one. And then um, this is a coloring page that shows when the dragon is, is tuning him out. And there's like the little speech bubble so you can write your own words in. And then here, is the cover kind of spread out so you can color that as well so again this is free and it's on my website there's also some tips for how to understand how children experience grief and also um, five ways to help a grieving child so i think that these are some helpful useful tips and i consulted experts to pull these tips together um, so let's do our activity if you have your paper and crayons, now is a great time to pull those out, whether you're watching live or whether you're watching the replay, either way. So um, you can use this paper from the kit or you can just get a blank piece of paper. It doesn't matter, either way. So um, I want you to picture what your dragon might look like in your mind. And I'm gonna ask you some questions there at the bottom of this sheet. So before you drew your dragon, you could kind of have a parent or read them yourself if you are a reader and circle all the different attributes or traits that you want your dragon to have. So I'll have you, um, so think about, close your mind if you, if you want to and try to picture it. Does your dragon have a long neck like Sorg, Sarg, sorry, <laughs> um, or a short neck? Does your dragon have spikes on his spine or her spine or not? Does your dragon have scaly skin or smooth skin? Does your dragon have big eyes or kind of small beady eyes? One thing I love about this illustration of the dragon is if you look through, look how kind the dragon's eyes are and how caring. This is something that the illustrator added to the story that I wasn't picturing. When you write a picture book, you're supposed to leave room for the illustrator to bring their vision to the story. And I wasn't necessarily picturing the dragon being so caring. But I love it. When I saw the pictures come back, I just was I I just knew that this was how this dragon was supposed to look all along, even though originally I probably had a different picture in my mind. I don't even remember what I was picturing anymore. Because once I saw this version of the dragon, it just felt so right. Like this is how he was always supposed to look. What do you think, Kara? Yeah. Um, so I love the eyes. They're very kind. Um Okay, so does your dragon have little arms or long arms? What about our dragon, Kira? Our dragon has pretty long arms. Yep, he's got long arms. <laughs> and that's another thing. I was picturing, picturing the dragon with kind of short little arms, but I like the long arms a lot better. Um, okay, does your dragon wear boots or does your dragon go bare feet, barefoot? Does your dragon have floppy ears or kind of flat ears? So our dragon has floppy ears. 
Does your dragon have a long snout or a short snout? Ours kind of has a longer snout, right? How about teeth? Sharp teeth, kind of no. flat teeth, no teeth. Our dragon does, well, I'm sure our dragon has teeth, but you never see them. Um, giant wings, tiny wings, no wings at all. Um, claws, no claws, horns, no horns. Okay, so think through all those traits. And then um, if you haven't started yet, go ahead and start drawing your dragon. And while you're thinking about um, or starting to draw your dragon, we'd like to show you some dragons from some of our friends. So here's the dragon Kira has been working on during this call. Tell us about your dragon, Kira. Um, so her name is Icy. That's supposed to be me. And then uh, she has really long wings. She's kind of small. Um, she has little kind eyes, and then uh, she she's really warm, even though her name is Icy. I love that. So I I can see that the eyes and, are very kind. And she's really fluffy. She's a fluffy, so she's not scaly or smooth. She's fluffy. She's fluffy. I love that. So do you have any tips for how to draw a dragon? Because let me tell you, I tried, and it's hard. Is it hard? Not that hard. <laughs> not that hard? It did take me a couple of tries to get that one, but it's not that hard. Like, this is one that I tried before. Oh, awful. yeah. Awful. <laughs> no, it's not awful. <laughs> but I do like where you landed. So sometimes that's another good point. You could, you don't give up if it doesn't look how you want it the first time. Try and try again. Okay, so a couple of other examples we want to show you. This is from our friend B, and she's eight. And she drew this dragon. I forgot to ask her if the dragon had a name, but pretty awesome, don't you think? I love that this dragon is very, very colorful and has giant, giant wings. Like my dragon has tiny wings. Oh, oh. And this one has giant, giant wings. Okay, and then this is another. <laughs> this is another dragon from our friend Audrey. And she drew hers kind of like in the form of a Pokemon. So hers is more round and fluffy. And look at those beautiful eyes. So there's a lot of different ways that you could approach this. Your dragon could look like anything you want. It doesn't have to look like a traditional dragon. Really anything you want. So um, now I want to tell you kind of about the cool part that we've decided we want to do. And that is that once you finish your dragon, Kira and I would love to see it, wouldn't we? We would love to see your creativity. I would love to see if your dragon is colorful, lots of colors, just one color, two colors, chubby, skinny, tall, short, all, all of the different things your dragon could be. Um, and when you finish your dragon, I want you to upload it. If your mom will let you upload it to Instagram, you can tag it, my big, dumb, invisible dragon, or you can just leave a comment here on this live post. Um, and Kira is gonna be our picker. She's gonna pick a winner from all the dragon drawings, and we would love to mail you a copy, a signed copy of the book, if you will do that. What do you think, Kira? Yes. Is, are you excited to pick your favorite dragon picture? Yes. I think that's gonna be great. And I forgot to show you one more, which, oh, I would have been in so much trouble if I didn't show you this, because my husband worked very hard on this. My husband, Kira's dad, is an illustrator himself, and he's an artist and um, a creative director, and he drew a dragon for us. And this is the dragon he drew. He drew a baby dragon, given the thumbs up, and look what's on his little balloon. A little baby. <laughs> so he imagined that a baby dragon, just like little boys love dragons and dinosaurs, what if little dragons and dinosaurs love little boys? Like, like to have them on t-shirts and have them on balloons and things. So that's, that's what my husband imagined. Isn't that cute? All right, so there's just so many different ways that a dragon can look. These two kind of use the purple and the, and the blue and pink. and pink, which I really like. This one's super colorful. You can go lots of different directions with your dragon. And so in, in one week, April 3rd, um, I'm gonna let Kira pick her favorite dragon out of all those that get submitted, either on Instagram with the hashtag MyBigDumbInvisibleDragon or just on the comment of this live video after it goes live. Um, and the winner will get a signed copy of the book mailed anywhere in the US. Okay, so if you would like a copy of this book for yourself or for a friend, um, it's available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and your favorite independent bookstore. 
my favorite independent bookstores I'm going to tell you about two that are here local to me in Utah. One is called The King's English, and they have a website. You can order from them. They are a wonderful children's, or not, they have a great children's section, but they sell all kinds of books. And they um, have, are a staple. They've been around for years in the Salt Lake area, and it's a wonderful bookstore. So if you're thinking about um, purchasing a copy, I would encourage you to buy it from your local independent bookstore to help keep them afloat during this challenging time, or pick my favorite bookstore. Or another one is called The Printed Garden, and it's really close here in Utah to me. It's in Sandy, Utah, and I don't think they have a website you can order from, but they will take phone orders. And look into it. A lot of your local bookstores will take phone orders right now, even if they don't have a website set up. You can call them. They will, a lot of them are also hand delivering the books right to your porch um, because they want to keep open and keep readers reading during this challenging time. So anyway, that's our live. I'm so sorry about the technical difficulties at the beginning, but I'm so glad we managed to get it going in the end. And for those of you who stuck around, thanks for watching and happy reading. Bye.